Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a top level game of Professional Starcraft 2. Today it's time for a Protoss vs Zerg, where we find ourselves on the map Everdream. Spawning here in the bottom left hand corner, playing with the red Protoss probes from South Korea, we have none other than Stats. His opponent all the way in the opposite corner with the blue Zerg drones from Italy, he goes by the name of Raynor. Already, already a probe moving across the map very early on after putting down that pylon on the low ground. Now Everdream, it does have a relatively short rush distance, so he should be able to arrive here before the Zerg player can go for the natural expansion. Already though, a drone was sent right here to patrol on the low ground, and this is one of the things that Raynor has been incorporating in his play recently. So he's gonna be forced to now take the third base as his very first expansion, which is a little bit annoying, but at this level, I mean, it really shouldn't matter all too much much. Now, I do want to talk about that for a little bit, though, because, I mean, this is a Protoss versus Zerg. The first couple of minutes are pretty much always the same, with the exception right now of the Zerg player being forced to take their third, rather than their natural expansion. This is one of the things that Raynor has been going for in his games recently, where he takes a drone off of the mineral line just to make sure that he does not get cheesed. I mean, he does it apparently in Protoss vs Zerk as well, where he has a, a drone over here for just a little while just to make sure that there's no cheeky buildings going up on his side of the map. But he's been doing it especially in the Terran vs Zerk matchup. He's not sending a drone across the map to scout. He's mostly just scouting his side of the map to make sure that there's no structures going down in the most likely location. And he's also using um, his, uh, his Overlords for exactly that same reasoning here as well. I mean, in this particular case, he is going to be sending that first one across the map. But I've noticed, at least in his Zerg versus Terran, he's actively scouting to make sure that he does not get cheesed. And it's kind of interesting, because none of the top-level Zerg players are really doing it, other than Raynor, right? So, Dark, Serral, Sue, I mean, none of those players are really going for any of those moves. And it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see him uh, incorporating that a little bit more. For a long time, it's been uh, considered to be a bad move. Because when you think about it, right, every single second that a probe or a drone or an SCV is not mining, it's about 0.8 to 1 mineral a second of potential mining time that's been lost, right? So worker scouts, I mean, you got to take them um, for what they are worth. They are pretty expensive, especially in the early game when you don't have a lot of money yet, right? So... Um, yeah, you definitely want to be able to use those uh, those scouting tools effectively. Stats right now sticking around for a little while longer. He doesn't want to lose this probe because that would uh, that would add a ton to the additional cost right here of this scout. Uh, but he wants to get as much information here as he possibly can. Now, one common follow up actually from uh, or by Zerg players here whenever they get their uh, their natural expansion blocked is just to go for a ton of Zerglings, get link speed, and just rush across the map. A lot of Zerg players have been going for that move, so we do see a double Adept opener right here for stats, just to make 100% sure that he's gonna be fine, right? I mean, two Adepts in the early game, unless you make a, a terrible mistake, until Link Speed is done, they really should be able to uh, put in quite a bit of work. I like this little move, actually. Ooh, that's a good bait. Nice. He will be able to find out as well. Come on, stats. There you go. Make me look good. <laughs> you will be able to find out that a third hatchery is taken, and while that doesn't really tell him everything, I do like this little move over here. He might even commit into the main base. Very, very nice. Gets a couple of drone kills here. That's awesome. Uh, but he now also confirms that there is no, for example, like Baneling Nest or Quick Roach Warn or anything like that. He also probably saw the wiggle right there on the, uh, the spawning pool, so he knows that there is something in production. It's not gonna be Adrenal Glance at this point, believe it or not. Gets another drone kill, actually. Very nice. I mean, if, if he gets one Adept out of here, uh, yeah, I think this is fine. Very good. He also forced out a lot of additional Zerklings. This is an amazing early game right now here for Stats. What is this follow-up going to be? Okay, so it is going to be what we consider to be the new normal. Okay, can we make jokes about that yet? This is the new normal in the Protoss vs. Zerg matchup. For the longest time, we saw, like, for example, uh, Archon drops as a standard opener, and then we saw Stargate openers, obviously, for a very long time. And while both of those builds are still relatively popular, this has become extremely popular recently. Now, this is a bit of an awkwardly positioned robotics facility. I think it's gonna be fine here. Prism, though, has already been moved out, and this is, yeah, it's it's strong. So, basically, you go for Resonating Glaives, and you put on a lot of pressure. Now, you don't even have to kill too much. Just forcing out a lot of Zerklings at this point is awesome. Forcing out a couple of Roaches is not a big deal either, but you can absolutely shut down a lot of those uh, drones very quickly if you do successfully shade into a mineral line. The downside here for Protoss is that if he 
Uh, doesn't get a bunch of damage done, and he doesn't kill a whole bunch of Zerklings and stuff. The Roaches may just go ahead and counterattack to the other side of the map, so he probably is looking to maybe start up some Immortal production here in just a little bit as well. But first up, let's see though what he can go ahead and, and pull off right here with these Adepts. That is a lot of Zerklings. Is he gonna commit? Ooh, okay. I thought for a second he wanted to commit there, but that was a, a bit cheeky. Obviously, those queens can still shoot from the low ground towards the high ground, so it would have been a dicey position for sure. Revealing right now as well that there is an observer here uh, very close by. He's gonna commit, I think, at some point. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So he's trying to get into a good position. So Glaives, by the way, it basically is an attack speed improvement here for these Adepts. So they attack ridiculously fast right now. Here's the second shade going towards the natural expansion. Good surround, though, with those Zerklings, but how many drones can he get? Already the drones have been run. So they're running right now towards the main base. And all things considered, a good defense here by Raynor. He gets a lot of damage done, obviously, though, by just losing or forcing a lot of lost mining time. And you can see the traits have still been pretty solid here, all things considered. One big thing to keep in mind here is that Stats has not actually got a third Nexus here. And that's the big deal, right? I mean, worker-wise, he's actually a little bit ahead right now. But as long as Raynor doesn't lose a ton of workers, he should be in a really, really good position. He's now even preparing with Spore Crawlers as well, because one common follow-up right now for Protoss players is to go for the Dark Templar. And obviously, uh, well, the Twilight Council. You can go for the Dark Shrine very easily, and then you're forcing out even more damage right here by forcing out a couple of Spore Crawlers. Yeah, very, very nice. One of the reasons, though, why Raynor feels confident doing this is because, well, he has seen that there is no... Um, you know, third Nexus anywhere to be found yet. So just to put this in perspective, it seems like... Oh, actually, finally a couple of the Adepts do come in. Nicely done here by Stetch, actually. Getting a couple more worker kills, and every single worker kill right now is awesome. This is super good. Got a couple more, my man. They're right here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, this is, this is nicely done here. Six worker kills on top of the ones that he already killed earlier. These Adepts have been absolutely awesome. That's now 11 worker kills here in total. Now, just to put it in perspective, right, this third Nexus right now is coming up at, like, give or take, the seven-minute mark. And most of the time, we see this one coming up at latest at maybe, like, 5.30. So this Nexus is very, very late. And the question is, how exactly are you going to follow this up right now if you are stats, right? Because I can guarantee you that Raynor is feeling pretty confident right now by seeing that third... Well, he actually hasn't seen it yet. Oh, my God. That's actually a big problem. He needs to see it. He's making a lot of drones right now, which is a bit of a risk. This could just be a, uh, a complete two, like two base all in as a follow up here from stats. So it seems like making this many workers here is a little bit greedy, but apparently he's feeling uh, confident, right? Already going up to 64 workers right now. He's going to be able to fully saturate his three bases here very quickly. I would be a little bit worried. Yeah, I was going to say, like, he just made so many workers, probably making the assumption that a third base is there, but he hasn't actually seen it. So that's a little bit of a gamble. If this would have been like a, an 8-gate, 2-base all-in, right, um, this would have been a disaster. I mean, Raynor hasn't seen much in the main base. Additional gateways are coming up right now, but I mean, those are obviously after the third Nexus. I'm a little bit surprised with how many, uh, how many workers he squeezed out there, but obviously he's a much better player than I am, so uh, I guess uh, we can't critique it all too much, but he's, he still hasn't figured it out. It's kind of crazy, right? He's even started up the fourth base and everything. I guess, I guess he, he realizes now, okay, well... If it was going to be a two base all in, it would have already hit. So since there's no real scary units on my side of the map and that little hit squad went all the way back home, I guess there has to be a, a base out there somewhere. Because otherwise, uh, there's no way that uh, that the, the Protoss player would have made those moves. But still, I, I would have liked to see him at the very least confirm that there is a base out there somewhere. Either way, Protoss already ready to uh, throw up a couple of force fields here on the ramp potentially slice off half of that Zerg army. Prism inside of the main base will be able to go back home as well. Third base now finally does get spotted. Probably no surprise here for Raynor. Well, Immortal takes a little bit of damage, but there is a shield battery, and actually a couple more are finishing up as well. This should be a pretty good defense right here for the South Korean Protoss player. Now notice here, by the way, um, it's plus two a missile, and then even the tunneling claws upgrade there as well for the Zerg. So this is a little bit unconventional. Ooh, nice force wood once again. Good uh, corrosive balls actually as well on a couple of those sentries, but none of them actually get picked up. Most of the time we see a Baneling follow-up right now in the current version of the meta. But apparently he's going to be sticking around on Roaches and Ravagers here for a little while longer. This uh, strikes me as once again a little bit cheeky because someone of the caliber of, of stats, he, I mean, he shouldn't take damage from Tunneling Claws Roaches, right? I mean, he can probably burrow 
maybe into the natural, but as you can see, there are photon cannons already in position. It's usually not the uh, best position to uh, to move into because it's a bit of a gamble. Reynard already pretty much maxed out, and well, as we know, stats. He's considered to be the shield of ire. He's extremely good defensively, and I don't really see him rolling over to a uh, a Roach Ravager timing attack. That being said, though, this is a scary Zerg force, right? I mean, he's going to have a lot of stuff. He's even now double upgrading these Roaches and Ravagers. Proto's still on three bases. Obviously, um, he doesn't necessarily need a fourth base either, but here we go. The Roach hit squad. Tunneling Claws is finishing up in about 10 seconds. He's probably just going to actually try and move in there without Tunneling Claws. Forcing the Protoss player to stay occupied over here. Yeah, this is not bad at all. Tunneling Claws is done right now. Good snipe right there on the pylon as well. And while most of that Protoss army is right now chasing those couple of roaches in the natural, we do now see the big army. Oh, huge force fields. Or huge storms as well. Moving over towards the third base location. Battery overcharge being utilized there as well. Stalkers being warped in into the main base. Couple of immortals right there over in the natural too. They're uh, gonna be able to get rid of these roaches, and he even left one of those observers behind as well, taking that out of the control group very, very rapidly. And all things considered, this is only a handful of workers going down. Pretty incredible defense right now here by stats, but obviously the economy is still a little bit dicey. That being said, though, he's getting really good value here out of the units that he does have. Oh my god. Oh, big corrosive balls. Almost loses all of those high Templar as well. That would have been a disaster. Eventually, the Zerg army will be deflected, but you gotta keep in mind that there is a fourth base and now even a fifth base on the back of this as well. So supply-wise, Raynor can start throwing away a couple of these units as well. He's a big fan of going all the way up to like 90 workers in this matchup. Well, maybe not so much when he's playing Roach Ravager, but uh, he's a big fan of making a lot of workers and then just throwing army after army after army at the opponent. In a way, forcing them to contain on three bases and then eventually, obviously, they run out of money. And as long as you have more income than your opponent, you can win the long game. Fourth Nexus right now acquired here on the low ground. Most of the Protoss army actually just simply marching across. Stats apparently feeling confident that this Zerg player is going to turn back around. And it turns out that that is true. Although a couple of roaches actually now came from the bottom section of the map too. And they're going to force the council there on that fourth Nexus. That does mean that this fight over here is really important here for Stats. He's very committed. He needs to get something done. Oh well, there we go. Beautiful zoning. Yeah, I love this. A couple of the stalkers being split up right now. Now we do see a couple of those roaches actually coming up as well, almost storming down his own war prism. Love the fact that he's uh, he's forcing this Zerg player to stay down the low ground over here. He's got the higher ground. Insert your uh, your Star Wars joke here. But he's now getting the kill here on the third base, or I guess the very first expansion of Raynor. And that's 16 drones here going down in the grand scheme of things as well. Excellent zoning here, though, by stats, trying to make sure that all of these Zerg units are uh, get left at bay. But here we go. Now with that third base gone, apparently this is the moment. Oh my god, he blinks forward. This is the moment where Raynor decides to go in for the fight. Little bit of a dicey moment there. I did not expect stats to just, you know, blink on top of all of those Roaches and Ravagers. They have very good upgrades. All of the Immortals are gone right now. But, I mean, big picture, once again, 32 drones went down during all of that. So for the very first time in this game, Stats is the one right now. Well, he had a slight lead earlier in the economy, but he takes a pretty dominating advantage right now when it comes to the work account. Nicely done. Nicely, nicely done. Still feeling uh, a little worried here, though, for the Protoss player. Because while that was going on, like I said, the fourth Nexus was cancelled. There's even a cheeky little Zerkling right now burrowed in that spot. Without a fourth base, the main base and the natural, right? They're gonna run out and these probes will have no places to mine anymore. Already, this is a little bit of oversaturation. Still though, the cost efficiency here of the Protoss army is not to be underestimated. Couple of roaches over here as well, moving in. Storm, ooh, apparently the only tool uh, for defense right now, but it's gonna be enough against these roaches and ravagers. This is pretty sick, man. He's so stalker heavy, right? Like, I mean, he doesn't really have very high-tech units, with the exception, I guess... Oh my god, a little bit of a move command blunder there. Um, he doesn't really have a lot of high-tech units. A couple of Immortals right now are being added into the mix again as well. But this is, from both players actually, obviously, relatively low eco armies. Relatively low-tech armies. Okay, so Hive is done. No Greater Spire or anything like that. Although I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea against this heavy of a stalker force. Anyway, looks like all of the yeah energy is gone out of the High Templar. So that does mean that this army... 
is going to be able to approach a little bit easier. Battery overcharge, though, keeping the Zerk units at bay. Plus three missile is going to finish up for these Roaches eventually. And while we normally don't see a Zerk player being stuck on Roach Ravager still at that point in the game, he is going to be able to get some really, really powerful hits in with these Roaches and with those Ravagers. Do we have any upgrades? Yeah, we just have plus two right now for the Protals, which is, yeah, not, not that great. Love the idea, actually, of adding on Infestors right now, too. So, Blink can be nullified. If you manage to land a Fungal Growth on these, uh, on these Stalkers, you can actually prevent them from blinking around. So, I think that's his goal right now, right? So, one of the reasons why these Stalkers are so powerful is because he keeps walking out of the Corrosive Biles and blinks around to catch up to the army and to retreat. One, uh, yeah, one good Corrosive, or sorry, one good Fungal Growth can change the title battle very quickly. Okay, now Stats. In a bit of a brave position here, completely leaves this Nexus uh, unattended. The Stalkers are close by, and I guess this Protoss army is once again rebuilding over at the third base, but he really needs this base. Good scout here for Raynor. Does figure out right now what's going on, and immediately the Zerk army is set in motion. There's a Lurker den right now coming up as a follow-up, and also that Hydralisk den. Okay, cool. He did add on a couple of workers once again, so Raynor once again comfortably sitting at a 70 worker count, but... Gotta be careful, though. This is a very cost-efficient Protoss army. While it's only 150 versus like 200 supply, right? This, this Protoss army is certainly capable of beating that of the Zerk. At the same time, once again, big hit squad over here! Is there gonna be enough? Oh my god, I don't think there is! Nope! Say goodbye to that Nexus. Stalkers, though, nope, coming up with the, uh, well, the blink forward. Nexus goes down. He's leaving most of the Protoss army over at the fourth base, which is really, really important. Because otherwise, the other Zerk army would engage over there. Even though the Nexus was killed, was that a valuable trade? He's getting a lot of Stalkers right now for these Roaches and Ravagers. Pretty decent Blink Micro here by Stats. Eventually does, uh, yeah, tighten that uh, that play up a little bit. That was an awful lot of Roaches, though, going down right there. 116 right now in total. But look at the cost efficiency, right? The problem is, Zerk has been mining a lot more. I like this transition, though, going into the Lurker Den. This is the Seismic Spines upgrade, which is basically a... Uh, a ranged improvement for the Lurkers. Now, Archon Immortal Storm is excellent when it comes to dealing with Lurkers in small numbers. I wonder, though, what were to happen here if Raynor, say, adds in, like, 20 Lurkers. I mean, no, no ground army is gonna properly be able to deal with that, right? Un unless you manage to, like, you know, storm them before they burrow or something like that. Still the Infestors into the mix as well. I don't think he's seen... Uh, well, now he does. He's seen the Lurkers right now. A couple of Corrosive Balls. Trying to get that Observer. Keep in mind, the Lurkers obviously are burrowed. So if you manage to get the kill on that Observer, that would be absolutely amazing. Okay, Stats right now, but is back up against the wall. He doesn't have a Prism here anywhere, so he can't really go for like a big push. At the very least, I don't think he does. No, he doesn't. So he's playing very cautiously, and I wonder if he needs to give up this position. Yeah, maybe going for the counterattack instead. I don't mind that move. That base was pretty much mined out anyway, and if you can... Uh, Defend at home, secure the newly acquired base, and maybe take out a base of two or two of the Zerk. That is a really good position to be in. He's definitely going to be able to get the base here in the center if he focus fires it down. And you can see the Zerk army, while normally very mobile, it doesn't have creep to come back home very easily. So that base is gone. A couple of roaches right now tunneling as well through the center of the map. And actually, most of the Protoss army actually has gotten close together. Good force fields once again. We do also see some nice fungal growths though, preventing these stalkers from chasing those roaches and ravagers. Nice move here. I like this little move out as well, though. This is really nicely done. A couple of Zealots now moving towards the bottom right hand corner. Really good stuff. Stats now pinning back that Zerk army, right? Going in for the counterattack here was actually brilliant. Really, really liking that. He lost the third Nexus, but he doesn't really care. He knows that the Zealots right now are going to be able to put in quite a bit of work. Lurkers, obviously, not going to be able to, like, really get into a position when the Protoss army is retreating. In the meantime, Zealots are taking care of the hatchery in the bottom right-hand corner, but the Zerk army is still looking menacing, and the bank here of the Zerk player is huge as well. Finally does spend it right now on 18 additional Hydralisks. Where are the Zealots? Come on, send the Zealots over there. And once again, he's abusing the terrain of the map here wonderfully. Really good game here by Stats, but the problem is he just doesn't have the economy, right? Zerk has been able to mine more here the entirety of this game. Well, pretty much the entirety. And while he did get a lot of worker kills earlier on, this is still a little bit dicey. I mean, he's making the best of it, though. 
Keep in mind, this base over here was never retaken. It's not like Zerk has a ton of money to spend either. That bank is completely empty right now. If this base also gets sniped, that would become a, a bit of a problem here for Raynor. He needs to take a new expansion. At the same time, once again, a couple of roaches here in the mineral line. Forcing those Protoss units to be warped in at home. Okay, Stats decided to not risk it. Oh, if he can get those lurkers, that would be huge. He does blink right there. Gets a couple of them. He gets, yeah, all four. He gets all four. Huge storms as well on the ramp. Oh, this Zerk army though is still so menacing. I'm just looking at those lurkers and they can just line up so much damage on all of these Protoss units. Is there going to be enough here for the Protoss player to break through? Those spine crawlers actually, while originally made to deal with zealots, are going to be very helpful. This is such a nail-biter of a game right now. Both players are basically broke. Raynor, though, I mean, he's had a cost-inefficient army for a long time. This is the first time where he gets a really, really powerful force. A couple of lurkers are just about to finish up. There we go. They do burrow underground. Stalker's excellent, obviously, when it comes to maneuvering around this army. The drones are pulled away from the mineral line as well to try and soak up as much damage as possible. Those handful of immortals, though, absolutely amazing. Blinks on top of all of these Zerg units. Most of the lurkers right now are gone. Raynor reinforcing this to the best of his abilities, but I don't see... Uh, okay, uh, there's actually a couple of observers over there. I was going to say he's not seeing the lurker that's all the way over there actually Raynor with the 300 IQ play puts the uprooted spine crawler on top of that lurker to prevent it from being target fired down the observers here are awesome obviously but you gotta be so careful that's four crawler and those hydras are looking to hunt down these units very very easily looks like the stalkers right now are in range right there off the lurker the lurker does go down more Zerklings, though, do come in for the reinforcement. The Prism is a little far away. And is there going to be enough right now for the Protoss player to hold on? That fourth base, obviously, in a lot of trouble here as well. Because those resources are going to run out very quickly. That is essentially his lifeline. While this is all going on, Raynor is expanding towards the top section of the map. So he does have new places for those workers that he has to continue mining. And Stets is kind of on his last legs right now. He's not going to be able to remax his army anytime soon. He needs another base for that. And there's no way after he goes home that Raynor's going to allow that. And... Despite this being an absolute nil-biter of a game, Raynor does obtain the victory. But, I mean, that was, that was close. That was ridiculously close. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, hit that like button down below. I mean, do me a favor and, you know, maybe the YouTube algorithm will pick up this video. If you didn't like it, though, feel free to hit that dislike button. For now, though, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.